What's up everybody? Before I dive into today's episode, I want to let you guys know that I'll be at the Lost Toys in Dallas, Texas this Saturday, May 26th from noon to 5 p.m. I'll once again be hanging out and selling a few collectibles and comics. So if you're in the area, come say hi. All the info is in the description below. With that covered, let's take a look at the history of Juggernaut. Juggernaut first appeared in the X-Men issue 12 in July of 1965, and like most of Marvel's characters introduced around this time, he was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Since debuting in the Silver Age of Comics, Juggernaut has easily become one of Marvel's most fan-loved villains. He's huge, unstoppable, and has a very unique origin and source of his power, in comparison to the vast majority of characters in the X-Men universe. He also has a very close connection to Charles Xavier, which makes him all the more interesting, and his rivalry with the X-Men more complex than most. So let's find out how and why. Juggernaut's real name is Kane Marco and he was raised by his father Kurt Marco after his mother died when he was very young. Eventually his father met and married Sharon Xavier, who was of course the widow of Brian Xavier and mother to Charles Xavier. Once Kurt and Sharon were married, they moved into the Xavier Mansion in Westchester, New York which later became the Xavier Institute for Higher Learning. But Kane was a bully to his stepbrother Charles, something that was driven mostly by jealousy, as Charles was good at everything he did, like being a star of football and track athlete, which led to Kane's father favoring Charles over him. However, what Kane didn't know was that Charles was succeeding because of his mutant ability to read minds, including Kane's. And when Kane ultimately found out that Charles was a mutant and his success came from his powers, Kane began to resent Charles. Matters only grew worse when Kane accidentally started a fire in his father's lab during an argument with him. The fire grew out of control and Kurt died from smoke inhalation while saving both of his sons. Out of guilt and anger, Kane convinced himself that it was very out of the ordinary for his father to do something so selfless, and that the only reason he sacrificed himself was to save Charles. Sometime later, both Kane and Charles were drafted into the US Army and served in the same unit during the Korean War. And during one mission, they were in a firefight and Kane deserted the unit and Charles went after him, hoping to bring him back before he got into trouble. But while trying to get away, Kane stumbled into a cave that had the lost Temple of Sidorak inside. There he found the Crimson Gem of Sidorak, and when he touched it, an inscription magically appeared that read, Whosoever touches this gem shall be granted the power of the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. Henceforth, you who read these words shall become forevermore a human juggernaut. Kane was then mystically transformed into Sidorak's avatar, a living juggernaut, which is all fine and dandy, but the unleashed mystical energies caused the cave to collapse and Charles just barely managed to escape in time. Afterward, there was no sign of Kane, so Charles and the rest of the world thought Kane was dead. But even though Kane was buried under the rubble of the mountain, he had already been transformed into the juggernaut, and he used his recently acquired powers to dig himself out from under the trillion tons of rocks that fell on him. It took him several years to do so, but that just gave Juggernaut lots of time to plot against his stepbrother, Professor Xavier. And by the time he made his return, there was nothing but revenge on his mind. At this point in time, some of you who aren't familiar with the Juggernaut might be saying, wait, so Juggernaut is not a mutant? Well, no, no he is not. As I mentioned, he gets his power from the Stone of Sidorak the most mysterious of all the deities of black magic. When Sidorak was driven from Earth, he left behind him the curse of the Juggernaut. And we learn all of this, including Juggernaut's origin, during his debut in X-Men issues 12 and 13. Now let's take a look at his appearances in comics over the years. So we now know that Juggernaut first graced the pages of a comic in X-Men issues 12 and 13. And in these issues, while Charles Xavier gives us his origin via flashbacks, the Juggernaut attacks the X-Mansion. But by the end of issue 13, Angel finds a way to remove Juggernaut's helmet, allowing Professor X to use his powers to get inside his stepbrother's head and put a stop to his attack. But this would be nowhere near the last time we see Juggernaut. In fact, he reappeared several issues later in X-Men issues 32 and 33. Here we see that since their last confrontation, Professor X has kept Juggernaut captive for months in a comatose state, in an effort to cure his brother and get rid of the power of the Juggernaut. Not shockingly, that doesn't go over well and Kane breaks free. He then goes on a rampage once again, trying to destroy the X-Men and his brother. By the end of issue 33, the X-Men figure out the only way to defeat Juggernaut is to outsmart him. So they trick him into touching a prototype ruby of Sidorak, which transports him away to the Crimson Cosmos. I mean, let's face it, you're not going to defeat someone that powerful by force. But his banishment was only temporary, and when the Juggernaut reappeared, he had gained mystical abilities, which led to a brief battle between the Sorcerer Supreme Doctor Strange in Doctor Strange issue 182. The fight didn't last long, however, as he was soon cast to an alternate universe by the cosmic entity, Eternity. And this brings us out of the 1960s and into the 1970s, where Juggernaut returns to Earth in Amazing Adventures issue 16 by sheer 
force of will. Then in the Incredible Hulk issue 172, the Juggernaut's helmet is removed once again, and he is defeated by Marvel Girl, Cyclops, and Professor X. While in prison, Juggernaut becomes friends with his cellmate, Black Tom Cassidy, who a lot of you now know from Deadpool 2. Anyway, the two become friends as they both have a relative on the X-Men, with Juggernaut being the stepbrother of Professor X and Black Tom being the cousin of Banshee. It's around this time we start transitioning into the 80s, and we see Juggernaut and Black Tom agree that if they ever want to defeat the X-Men, they'd need more help. So they decide to kidnap Madam Web, because she could predict their opponent's moves. But when Juggernaut went after Madam Web, he pulled her out of her life-supporting chair, and she almost died. Spider-Man then showed up and wasn't about to let Juggernaut just up and take Madam Web. So he fought Juggernaut back and eventually beat him by luring him into wet cement which acted as quicksand to Juggernaut, and he sank to the bottom. It took Juggernaut a month, but he eventually dug himself out. This leads us to the famous moment when Colossus and Juggernaut have a bar brawl in Uncanny X-Men issue 183. That's right, the first thing he did after being freed from the cement was go to one of his favorite bars in normal clothing. And I feel like that's an important thing to say because we don't really see him in normal clothing much. Anyway, Colossus accidentally spills a drink on Juggernaut and it leads to one of the best bar fights in all of comics. It's literally a seven page fight and it's glorious. We next see Juggernaut in the Mighty Thor issue 411 where he battles Thor during the Acts of Vengeance story. Thor throws his hammer at him and Juggernaut says, my personal force field is already affecting your dumb mallet, slowing it down, killing its momentum. Get the picture? Nothing can hurt me. Nothing. Mjolnir then stops inches in front of his face and Juggernaut grabs the hammer as it's about to return to Thor and smashes into him through five train cars and a freaking building. Saying, it's over, Blondie. You heard that right, Juggernaut wrecked Thor's world, which is super impressive. Thor doesn't stay down forever, but the point is, Juggernaut won the battle easily. I mean, Mjolnir literally couldn't even touch Juggernaut. That's insane. Now I'm gonna jump way ahead in time because I wanna talk about three of my personal favorite Juggernaut moments. First is the time Juggernaut fought World War Hulk. Yeah. That's the thing that happened in World War Hulk X-Men Issue 3. It's a crazy four-page battle that literally destroys the foundation of the mansion they're fighting next to. The fight comes to a standstill and the Hulk eventually gets fed up and says, I don't have all day. Nothing stops the Juggernaut? Fine. Keep going. And he dodges a full charge from the Juggernaut, which makes him run straight through a wall and into the bottom of a lake. It was an awesome matchup and a shame the Hulk had to end the fight short. Another favorite story of mine is from The Incredible Hulk Issue 602. While training his son Scar, Bruce Banner bombs Juggernaut's house to initiate a confrontation between Scar and the Juggernaut. Kinda drastic, but I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, this does lead to a fight between Scar and Juggernaut, but Scar manages to win his first fight by punching the Juggernaut into open space, proving to his father that he has the ability to use strategy in combat and not simply physical strength. The best part of this by far is when we see Juggernaut floating in space saying, oh, for the love of, it's hilarious and brilliant. But the last of my favorite moments I'm going to mention is when Juggernaut became Kurth, Breaker of Stone, in the Feared Self story. In said story arc, Juggernaut becomes one of the worthy, the divine hammer-wielding generals of the Serpent. You see, during his imprisonment on the raft, an object crashes from the sky and smashes into the prison. Juggernaut, of course, recovers from the impact, and upon hearing the hammer, he grabs it. The hammer then transforms him into one of the worthy, and he becomes Kurth, Breaker of Stone. With Kurth now in complete control of Kane's body and mind, Juggernaut uses a single massive hammer strike to nearly destroy the entire prison. The character Magic then struck a deal with Sidorak, who chooses her to become the new host of the Juggernaut's powers. But that doesn't go according to plan, and the entity transfers the Juggernaut powers to Colossus instead, giving us the ever so popular Colossus Knot. Colossus was then able to turn the tide on Kurth, but Kurth is teleported away by the Serpent. Later, during the final battle between the Avengers and the Worthy, Kurth is defeated by Wolverine using his Yuru armor, and he loses his hammer when the Serpent is killed by Thor. This leaves Kane without the power of Kurth or the Juggernaut. That is, until Sidorak eventually returned the Juggernaut power back to Kane Marco, and he became more powerful than ever. Speaking of, how about those powers and abilities? <laughs> Professor X defined Juggernaut's powers best when he said, As for the power of the Juggernaut, I simply quote the dictionary. A gigantic, inexorable force that moves onward, irresistibly crushing anything it finds in its path. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty terrifying. 
Juggernaut's immense strength enables him to lift 100 tons easily. And what's even crazier is that due to the mystical nature of his powers, he can increase his physical strength to immeasurable levels with a simple thought. This has given Juggernaut the ability to defeat powerhouses such as Thing, Colossus, and Professor Hulk, among others. In fact, the limits of Juggernaut's strength are unknown simply because of the fact that it comes from a magical source. Another aspect of his power is despite his huge size, Juggernaut is extremely fast. His massive leg muscles allow him to run at superhuman speed, and once in motion, he cannot be stopped. Hence the name, the Unstoppable Juggernaut. He's also invulnerable and has an invisible force field surrounding his body that makes him immune to any physical attack, no matter its size or intensity. Juggernaut can still be thrown, knocked back, or hit by blows, but he cannot be damaged by brute force. And if he's injured, his incredible healing factor kicks in. He has even been reduced to a skeleton before and was able to regenerate. Basically, as long as there's a single molecule of Kane's being left, he is unable to die, which gives Juggernaut one of the fastest healing factors in all of Marvel. The mystical energies of the gem flowing through Kane's veins also completely sustain him, meaning the Juggernaut can survive indefinitely without food, water, or air. Which of course is how he was able to survive for several years under the rocks that fell on him when the cave collapsed. In addition, Juggernaut is unable to tire or fatigue, no matter the physical exertion his body puts out. I know it's a bit on the nose, but in a nutshell, the Juggernaut is unstoppable. After all this, I know a lot of you are going to want some good Juggernaut reading recommendations. So read X-Men issues 12 and 13, Nothing Can Stop the Juggernaut from the Amazing Spider-Man title, World War Hulk X-Men issues 2 and 3, and Spider-Man volume 4, The Juggernaut. Before we get to this week's buy list, we want to thank today's sponsor, Verve. Verve is an awesome digital platform with a ton of great content. In fact, we've been using Verve for our watch-alongs on Variant Live for months. It's awesome. Well, for a limited time, the team over at Verve, spelled V-R-V, is offering you guys, the Variant Nation, an exclusive free 30-day ad-free trial of Verve Premium by going to vrv.co forward slash variant or by clicking the link in the description below. That's 30 days to watch so much awesome content like My Hero Academia Season 3 Sub, which we're currently watching on our Variant Live Watch Along. I love that freaking show. But on Verve, you can also watch Dragon Ball Super and one of my favorite animated shows from the 90s, Freakazoid. So, so good. If that's not enough for you, Verve also features other awesome content like Bravest Warriors, Rooster Teeth Anime Ruby, Attack on Titan, which you can watch either subbed or 100% dubbed in English, and their new show, Gary and His Demons. Verve Premium gives you unlimited access to additional content from channels like Crunchyroll, Cartoon Hangover, Funimation, and Mondo, all ad-free. You could also sync episodes ahead of time so you could watch them later, or watch your shows on the go without an internet connection through the Verve app on iOS or Android. You could download the Verve app now on your Apple TV, iPhone, iPad, Android, Roku, or even your Xbox or PlayStation, so access is crazy convenient. I'm telling you, if you're an anime fan, you need to check out Verve. Go to verve.co forward slash variant. That's vrv.co forward slash v-a-r-i-a-n-t. Or click the link in the description and get your free 30-day ad-free trial of Verve Premium now. And when you do, join us on Variant Live Mondays to talk some anime. Again, the offer is only for a limited time, so jump on it right away. You'll be glad you did. First up for Wednesday, May 23rd, we have Justice League No Justice Issue 3. Cyborg and Wonder Woman are forced to make decisions that will have devastating repercussions for all four teams, and potentially for those left behind on Earth. Next up is Black Panther Issue 1. That's right, an all-new series for Wakanda's king, T'Challa. If you wanted to start reading Black Panther, here's your chance. Now we have Star Wars Issue 8. Han, Luke, and Leia continue to fight to liberate Mon Cala, while 3PO must keep up his vital mission. Next we have The Flash Issue 47. This is the very first issue of the Flash War story arc. The long rising tension between mentor and former sidekick is brought to a head. This is a story no Flash fan will want to miss. And finally we have Exo Man of War Issue 15, Barbarians Part 1. As Harbinger Wars 2 besieges the Valiant Universe and Exo Man of War along with it, Arc of Dacia cannot escape the flames that now threaten his future, or the shadows that cloud his past. And that's going to bring another episode of Variant to a close, but remember links for all our social media like our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and our website is in the description below. Also be sure to subscribe and then hit the bell next to it so you're notified whenever we upload a new video. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.